everybody. Hopefully we're back. Um, see if we can stay up this time. Um, I don't know why it keeps disconnecting. It might be my internet. I have kind of, like, best for my area, but still crappy internet because I live basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, hopefully we, it should be, uh, it should stay up now. Let me know if you guys, um, can't see me or can't hear me or there's a problem with the stream. Let's just, uh, get right back in there. See all of my characters. I have quite a bit, <laughs> quite a few. Um, I've been playing EverQuest for a long time. And they're spread out throughout a bunch of different servers. Alright, I'm back in game. Hopefully you guys should be seeing what I'm seeing. My delightful team cat here. Alright, excellent. So, um, where did I leave off? I was casting my buffs. Always a good thing to do. Um, I'm actually going to recast this buff just because my cast bar is on top of other bars and I just I don't like the clutter. There we go. So now it's locked in there. And um, I was showing you guys the tracking. Um, so some characters in EverQuest can track and basically it's very handy because it the, uh, the little tracking box shows you all of the different mobs that are around you and if you're looking for a specific mob for a quest or for um, for farming purposes uh, you can find them and it will if I do this it will actually produce a little glowing arrow to the mob that I need I wanted to kill and then kill it so, I like having tracking. Not all classes have them, but I do enjoy playing classes that have tracking. Because it just makes life easier. And I see a shiny, so we're just going to go ahead and go get that shiny because apparently I like collecting beetles. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, this isn't going to get me on some sort of like terrorist watch list or anything. Just going to put that in our pocket and pretend that that never happened. Uh, okay, so our next quest is to uncork the vial of Tunar's breath near the hive. But, uh, oh, I'm so turned around. I'm, uh, I am gonna apologize right now. I am awful at navigating. I really am awful. That's why I have EQ map. Um, really bad at navigating. So we have to uncork this thing near the hive. Hello, Jengar. Still hanging out. My brethren. He seems you know, we're just we're gonna we're gonna do it guys. We're gonna We're gonna kill this guy again. Go team cat! Yeah. Aw, no treasure chest. So as we get closer to the hive, this now becomes highlighted. We back away. What? Okay, it's uh, okay. Finally, it went dark. It goes dark. So when you uh, <laughs> GPS too much. I do reply. I do rely on GPS. Uh, I'm awful. Um, so as soon as you get closer to the hive, it uh, it'll pop up. Okay, apparently I need to be on it this time. Not a safe distance. Let's kill these guys while we're waiting. Go team cat! Nothing can stop us. Yeah. Don't mess with him. He's angry. Why do I collect so many? Ooh, this actually might be an upgrade. Let's check that out. It is! It's chain, which is appropriate for our class. We're gonna equip that. Get rid of that leather helm and now we can uncork this vial let's see what happens 
the cool thing about EverQuest and actually a lot of other um all right, just like a geyser of smoke, and that apparently helped everything. Um, well, the cool thing about EverQuest that um, other MMOs later adopted is that it gives you your quest, um, your quest item right on on your quest uh, UI, so that you don't have to go searching through your bags for which item is your quest item, which is good because EverQuest has quite a few, quite a few items and quite a few. Um, um, just quite a few quests. It's EverQuest. Skinny Grub. Yep, gonna put that in our pocket, too. Hello, Beaver Magi! Hello! Welcome! I actually have quite a few GPS horror stories, but those, those are mostly because I didn't update my GPS. And, uh, it led me down like the wrong way on a one way and yeah it's just it's awful it's just, we're not talking about that so we're going to return to this sentry and let him know that we did the things I'm that he here. wanted us to do yeah this apparently we just smoked them out of the hive got a level for it yeah good get out of here you stupid bixies Oh no, our enemies are talking to each other. Sometimes for quest items you get um, house items, which is really cool because um, depending on the area that you quest in, you'll get um, items themed for that area. So because I'm questing in um, Fade Arc, I get Fade Arc themed items, which are actually kind of cool. Can we preview it? We can. So we're going to get a flower torch to put in our house. I don't know how much that looks like a flower, but alright. I'll accept your quest anyway because it's made of experience. I thought we got a new item. Maybe not. Oh, okay, we got new abilities though. So let's check these out. Ooh, poison. Excellent. I like poisoning things. I'm going to allow drag of life. So this actually is really important. Um, this is what's called a heroic opportunity. It's actually a um, a thing that EverQuest 2 has that uh, other games have later adopted. But it basically it starts a a group um, combo. So if I'm playing with another class, and it changes depending on which classes are playing together, um, I can start this like heroic combo move which does special things depending on which classes you're playing with. So, um, unfortunately I'm not playing with anybody else right now, but um, you'll see this thing pop up because I'll automatically hit it while I'm playing. Why am I collecting fairy bones? Why? I'm the most deranged cat ever. Well, I suppose maybe not. Most cats are hunters. Yeah, just chalk it up to my predator nature. I'm not collecting bones because I'm a weirdo, it's just because I'm a cat. Yeah, exactly. Not a serial killer. Well, actually, all cats are serial killers. So. Don't judge me. I could complete that quest. Or I could go get the shiny. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna... And there's a vendor, apparently, who's a mushroom. Alright. Whatever floats your boat, dude. Aw, oh, I already got that beetle. So if you already have it, it'll be all grayed out. And there'll be some red text telling you that you've already collected the item. But sometimes you can sell them on the auction house. Make a little bit of money. Because for some reason people don't like stopping and collecting the shinies. They're crazy to me. But... Quiet as a butterfly. I'm a cat and I'm a stealth class. I've got this, dude. How do I get up the tree? I'm a cat. Again, I got this. 
So in EverQuest, there are these um, clearly marked areas that you can actually interact with and climb. So basically, you just step up to it, and your character immediately starts climbing. Oh no, we've left our cat down below. It's alright! I'll be back for you, I promise. Don't get into trouble. Don't eat the fairy! Just... No, you can't climb the wall with me. This... It's not gonna ha You just let it go, dude. You can't. Apparently tigers can't climb. Which is... Stupid. But I'm s I'll be back in a minute! God. You're fine. Nope, gonna climb the tree anyway. Nope, not gonna listen to me. Yeah, he sent me up here. Now, normally, as I'm playing fairies, uh, I could have just... I could have just jumped off this ledge here and floated to the ground, because fairies have a uh, glide ability, which allows them to uh, float to the bottom. Uh, as long as they're not in combat, they can just... They don't take falling damage. However, we're not playing a fairy, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna... We're going to back up, carefully. Uh, going down is always harder. No! Oh, no, he just jumped off the edge. My cat is dead. No, he's fine. I can't jump off the edge without dying, but he can. Video game. Video game logic, guys. Why do I have to talk to you again? Oh, right. One thing I don't like about EverQuest is that there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of dialogue. A lot of dialogue. It's just probably don't need. Another reason why I'm looking forward to EverQuest next, if, when, hopefully soon, um, is if the worlds are dynamic and you can kind of get a feel for what's happening without having to, like, hit, like, uh, an NPC that has a big um, exclamation point or glowing book above their head, that'll be really nice because you can just see the area and what needs to be done rather than, um... Rather than, you know, have to talk to all these people. So if you guys just saw all of that crazy stuff that just, uh, lit up on my screen with the little text bar over this guy's head, um, there are languages in EQ2, and, uh, if you don't know a language, you can't understand the NPC when it's talking. Um, and apparently it shows up as symbols over their heads, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah, so we can't understand this guy at all. If I end up learning Goblin, which you can do in the game, um, I will then be able to understand, and the, the uh, voiceover text will change to what he's actually saying. So that's kind of a cool thing. We're going to go ahead and sneak up on this guy and poison him, because that's how we roll. <laughs> Loot him first. Thank you very much. Guardian. Not for us, but that's alright. That was effective. Let's do that again. I do like playing scout classes. Yeah, I see shinies. So we're just gonna go ahead and... You're not on the list, dude. Be thankful. Teeny cat. I'm proud. But not for us. Not yet, anyway. We're just gonna make our way towards a shiny. Apparently I like collecting these things. Uh, and I see another quest over here, too. That's probably for later, though. Oh! Oh, we're gonna go ahead and pick this up. Oh, there's another one over there. Damn you, shiny. You're leading me astray. We'll get to the quest. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll do it. I do really, really actually badly in open world. Um, right, finish that quest, too. In open world type games because of this reason right now. I'm like, ooh, what's over here? Ooh, what's over there? Ooh. What did I get? Alright. Yeah. I tend to, um, be all over the place when you give me an open world. 
and a non-linear questing experience. But hey, at least I explore, right? See the things? I swear there's another shiny over here. Hey, if one of you guys took it, I'm gonna beat you right. until it basically falls out like a pinata. Hey, Maybe I already collected it. Maybe somebody else took it. Oh, I hate it when people take my shiny. Alright, well, we're gonna kill him. Let's actually do the quest. Let's not be a crazy squirrel running around. I would use tactics, but it doesn't really seem like it's necessary right now. So I'm just gonna button mash. I will, ha however, show you uh, what happens when I hit this lucky break thing. So this thing pops up. And basically, if you complete one of these flashing uh, combos, it'll come up with another combo. And then if you... Uh, hit one of the abilities that are flashing again, you finish the combo. And I actually forgot that you can actually do it with yourself. So you can do your own combos. It's not just for, for questing. Okay, I see shiny. Okay. It's not just for, um, for when you're questing with another person. So it's not just um, party combos, but it's actually a personal combo too. It's been a while since I've played this. already got that one. That's alright. Now I totally forgot where I'm supposed to go, but thankfully there's a big flashing book on my mini-map, so it's kind of hard to miss. Probably gonna level again, because that's how, well it, that's how it happens when you're low level. Five seconds. Yeah, with those scouts out of the way. It's not like they respawn five seconds later. What they're doing to the water? Why would they... Why? A delicate vial. Kill the polluters. See, now they're on my list. I told you, you guys, that I was going to come back for you. I'm just going to sneak up on one of these guys. Probably better to start using tactics now. Well, I don't need to, to get into the habit of using tactics. Rather than just drop a kitty shop all over their faces. But we're gonna do that too. Because we can. Why wouldn't we? The loyalty point tokens. I have actually never seen that before. Apparently I have loyalty to loyalty point tokens. I don't know what they're for. We're on this adventure together. If anybody in chat knows what they're for, let me know. Level up, ding. Six. Oh, so badass. Sharpen claws, that sounds fun. Interrupts. Good, good. Ooh, and a snare. Nice. We're gonna put the snare. Where are we gonna put our snare? We're gonna put a snare up here. We're not gonna use snare very often. But. And that's an interrupt, so that's good. We like interrupts. We like being able to stop them from doing. Apparently Zex says there's cool stuff you can buy with them under the loyalty section of the marketplace. Very cool. We'll collect those then. Not that we have a choice. It's gonna go off the Now we have to collect some more. Have to be in the pond? Why not? I'm a big cat, so we're okay with water. Yeah, he's cool with it. Look at him. Splashing around in there. With <laughs> his derpy face. What are you doing over here? You shouldn't be over here. You should be over there. Put a rogue NPC over here. I'll let him go. I'm gonna do this thing. Well met. Oh, cool! I, you know what, Zach? I think that I think that's actually what happens. So Zach says that um, you earn the loyalty point tokens by doing the daily quests um, that are always at the top. And I must have actually completed it because it's not here anymore. And hello, hello from the U.S. Hello, Germany. Water.
Oh, they're poisoning the water. Ew. They're pouring basically slug slime into the water. Okay, so we have to go talk to the mushrooms that eat the, the, uh, that eat the little slug things. So we get some spores. Oh, I remember that quest. Collect some budding spores, but it's probably down here because I see a giant glowing thing. When in doubt, always go towards the shiny glowing thing. If video games have taught me anything, that's that's what you do. So it is actually 11 o'clock, and I was only going to stream for an hour. Um, but we'll finish up this last quest. Um, we did have an interruption in the middle of the stream, because it just basically didn't like my, my internet for a little bit. I'm gonna collect these spores. Aw, little deer. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute. On his awkward little legs. Adorable. When this game came out, it was actually quite visually striking. Of course, that was quite a few years ago. <laughs> but I remember when I first logged into the game, especially when I fir made my first fairy. And got into the Fade Arc area that I was like, oh my god, this game is so pretty. <laughs> it's 5 p.m. there, yeah. It's only it's only 11 o'clock here on the on the East Coast. Yeah, EQ2 is uh is a is is a good game. It's it's basically I, I think a lot of of the um uh, well now Daybreak titles hold their their value because there's something that attracts us to these games besides sort of like hype and and uh, just I guess I, I don't want to say visual appeal but that's the only words that's coming to my mind right now but you know like a lot of games they the they look really <laughs> all right so there's some dancing in EverQuest and that's what it looks like um, so there's just something about EverQuest that attracts you to the game, besides just Hello. hype and, and, and appeal of the moment, is basically what I want to say. Is there anything else I can do? Oh, I just unlocked an achievement. I'm a beginner quester, guys. Find out who or what is behind the attack. The Drippy Cave. Alright. Well, when you let fairies name things, that's what happens. That is exactly what happens when you let fairies name things. But you get things like the drippy cave. Yeah, I agree, Zek. Um, the EverQuest titles definitely have a, to quote her, quiet yet timeless charm. It's just, I remember, I remember when I first was playing, everybody else was playing World of Warcraft, and... Um, they were telling me about it, and I was like, yeah, but we've got housing, and we've got these epic heritage quests, and we've got this and that in EverQuest, and basically what World of Warcraft has and has always had is players. More players than any other game. Um, so, I just, I mean, I, I didn't see the appeal in World of Warcraft, but all of my other friends were playing with, so I ended up switching to World of Warcraft, and I don't, don't regret it because I met, a, I made a lot of really cool friends. But you know, there's just so much customization. Um, I actually had to make my character before the stream because I can spend hours, even now, in the character customization for, um, for EverQuest 2. I mean, you can, you can change their height. You can change, uh, for my, for my character, you can change their ear size, their ear placement. Um, you can change their jaws, their eyes, not just color, but like shape of their eyes, the tilt of their eyes. You can change so much about your character and really make it feel sort of customized and like you're different than other people. 
And the other ways that they do this is they, they have these options in here where you can change your prefix and suffix titles. Uh, I think when you hit level, okay, it says right here, when you hit level 20, you can create a last name for your character. Um, you can change the default voice of your character, like when they do the emotes, uh, the combat voices. Um, so even when your character emotes, they can have a different feel than other characters of both your your race and other races, um, because they do have the um, they have two voices for your race, and then they have other voices that you can pick from. Um, and they have the appearance tab where you can make your character look however you want to look. Um, cloaks that display your um, your guild uh, crest on them. Um, there's just so many different ways that you can customize your character in EQ2. And even though the game has aged, I really feel like it still has a lot of features that are av that aren't available in other games. Like in World of Warcraft, you still only have like you know, a handful of faces to pick from uh, when you make your character, and I mean, they keep releasing different hairstyles, but normally when they release a new hairstyle, everybody changes to one of those hairstyles, so everybody's still looking the same. But I have always enjoyed the character customization, and, and um, not only do they have uh, player housing, but they also have guild housing too, so you can like create this epic guild hall with your with your friends and you can decorate it you can put a lot of like really useful things in the guild hall like uh, crafting stations um, you can do a, a depot where you can put all sorts of your crafting materials so you actually never even need to harvest if you don't if you have a guild full of harvest uh, they actually have NPCs that will go and harvest for you they can't get rares but they can't harvest like the the normal mats for you. They you have a banker, an auction uh, vendor. You could basically make your guild hall like a mini city, and and you have everything that you need in the guild hall. You have uh, raid uh, teleports to raids. You have um, that's true. If you are really motivated, you could decorate a guild hall by yourself. And I'm pretty sure that uh, my guild that I'm in in this in this game has has done that. Um, my guild is actually a, a family-run guild. My mom and my sister are, um, and myself, even though I hardly ever play, are technically the guild leaders, and, and, uh, they have really created an amazing guild hall, um, that's so decorated. I think my, um, there's, there's a quests in the game that are repeatable that you can do for, um, um, housing pieces. Uh, I know that there's a halfling on a dock somewhere that's super hungry and if you collect a bunch of harvestables for him he will give you either a knife, a spoon, a spoon or a fork for your for your house or your guild hall and my mom actually quested so that she could create this huge dining table and basically have a place setting for every single member of the guild. Um, so everybody has their own place setting, everybody has their own knife, fork, and spoon, which is good because I don't like sharing. Um, that seems kind of unsanitary. But it's just, it's crazy that, like, the different things that you can do here and the different, like, sort of achievements or, or goals that you can set for yourself. Um, and I think that's one thing that that EverQuest really does well is that it, you can set your, like, even if you're a max level, you can set your own goals and work towards things that are in the game because there's just so many different achievements and titles and things like that um, that you can get. Um, one of the things I remember that I liked doing, I'm trying to, to find it, and I don't remember where it is. I keep saying hail because I keep getting age. So yeah, there's so many different achievements, and, um, most of the ones that I like getting are like the, um, the, uh, the Slayer. So if you kill a lot of a different creature, you get these Slayer titles, which are really cool because basically, um, you can go from like, um, like, Goblin Killer to Goblin Slayer, and you can just have that as part of your name saying, like, I quested a lot in this area, or this is my, like, character's, like, nemesis, and just, you can just sort of, like, create your own story for your character through the, through, a, through achievements, really. So, I am actually going to, uh, go ahead and end the stream. I was only gonna stream until 11. I know there was a hiccup in the middle, but, 
Um, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys did too. Um, if there are any like questions, comments, anything like that, um, I'd love to hear it. Um, go ahead and you can either uh, message me in in chat on Twitch or on Twitter. My handle is at Lucity, L-U-C-I-T-I-E. Um, I am actually playing the Beast Lord class. I, I had never played the uh, the Beast Lord before, um, so I, I bought it and I, I'm trying it out. And so far, I like it. Um, I do tend to like stealth-based characters sometimes, and and I do like pet classes. So I've got this tiger that follows me around and gets into trouble with me, and uh, I've got some stealth abilities here. See? I'm so I'm so stealthy. But, so I'm gonna, hopefully you guys will, um, tune in again, um, if you want to see me, uh, <laughs> hi guys, hi <laughs> blather bits, um, if you guys want to, um, see me continue with EverQuest 2, let me know, um, if you want to see me play a different game, let me know, um, I do have some survival horror games that, uh, I want to play, so I'll be switching, if I play a survival horror game, I'm gonna switch my um, my Twitch stream to be mature audience only because they are kind of scary, and I don't want a kid to like sort of wander in without a heads up that it's gonna be scary. I'm, they scare me much much less, you know, if you're a lot younger. Um, so the next time I'm streaming is actually tomorrow, uh, same time, 10 to 11. Um, so yeah, let me know what you'd like to see and uh, any tips or or help that you guys, um, you guys can give me, or, or advice is welcome, um, sound levels, song quality, video quality, if it was buffering a lot and I should decrease the video quality, let me know, um, but thanks for tuning in, um, and I had a really awesome time, thanks so much guys, and, uh, have fun, hopefully you'll, you'll try out EverQuest 2, um, it is free to play, um, the Beast Lord class, it, you have to buy that, but, um, yeah, try out, try out EQ2, it's, it's a fun game, if you're looking forward to EQN, try out the different titles that EverQuest has, uh, right now, um, just to see what they kind of offer, and what could be different, uh, thanks, Kerbin, go ahead and put up my streaming schedule for tomorrow in, in chat, um, thank you for doing that, and, uh, I will see you guys. Tomorrow. Hi guys.